Probably a fun fact on me is that I like to read. Like I, I, I like to read. That's 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 a lost art nowadays. <laughs> oh, my great uncle is uh, Jesse Owens. He won four gold medals in 1936. Yeah. Always want to leave people with this, man. To all the viewers, and everybody out there, man. Make sure you guys finish the story. Make sure you guys finish your journey because somebody's gonna need it. Yeah. All you gotta do is push the bad button. That's all you gotta do. Push the bad button. <laughs> Try not to think about the future too much, so you can maximize the now. Who the favorite rap artist? Man, to be honest, it's crazy. Tupac always been my number one, right? Like he got, he got he got me through so much stuff, but Lil Wayne has been in the modern day. I said, what does it really take? What does it really take to be great, Drew? And he looked at me and he was like, you really want to know? And he was like, to be honest, everything you did to get here, you need to be consistent times 10. Good morning, everybody. After a dawn and day, it's your boy, Coach Lee. We're back at it like we're mad at it. Welcome to the STW Fantasy Football Insight Show, where we give you the definite do's and don'ts of your team. If you win, we take all the credit. If you lose, we don't know what happened. But anyhow, man, appreciate you hanging out with the crew. Um, let's get my men's up in here. But guys, first off, Unc got a new toy, shiny new toy. Let me see if y'all know what it is, though. What's up, Unc? How you doing today? Master at work. <laughs> Just in case you missed it the first time. <laughs> you are watching a master at work. Yes, sir. This is your dude, Uncle Lee Roy. Don't say the Lee Roy without the junior. Yes, I am live from STWF Studios here in Arlington, Texas. And yes, sir, this is the Fantasy Football Insight Live show, a favorite of my own. And man, this is the show where we uh, wake y'all asses up and get these lineup questions going. But man, before we get things uh, going, we got to go, uh, where is he? Is he in Boston? Is he in Cincy? But it doesn't matter. He's just not Jake from State Farm, man. Let's get him on the show. Good morning, good morning. Yes, it's a very, very nice and frigid day here in Cincinnati. Great to see you. And I like that new toy. That looks great. I can finally see your face. It's been like two weeks. <laughs> man, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, it felt weird. I'm like, damn, man, I ain't been up here in a while, man. You know, but uh, yes, sir, you get to see a whole lot more of me. <laughs> and so does everybody else. We got a lot of shows coming up. So how's but the first, weather up there, Jake? I was just about to ask that. <laughs> What's up? How's the weather? 
uh, a nice crisp 30 degrees. <laughs> it's, not, it's no fun. We had some uh, snow two days ago, and it was uh, – I got to work just fine. Nice and icy, though. It was uh, – yeah, I definitely skipped my smoke break that day. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you, man. Appreciate you as always. So who we got in here already this morning? We see you, Anthony. Shout out to you, man. Oh, let's see. I'm mad. I'm mad at you. LOL. I keep believing in your sakes. <laughs> they get me down every week. Hey, LOL, no. good morning, crew. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, tell me about it, man. Shit, I'm insane, you know. Uh, like I said, I've been riding the wave of, uh, you know, this talk about we might go to the Super Bowl. I mean, we might make it to the championship shit. You know, I was just, you know, I'm in the Aaron Brooks, Bobby A. Bear, where we were going brown bags. So, you know, I'm definitely riding this way, no matter how it comes. But I think it's time to uh, give up on us. <laughs> hey, man, that, that division, y'all still in striking distance, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and honestly, it's crazy because unlike, you know, the who days, you know, they're like owing everything in their division. So, you know, they have a lot to, um, yeah, to make up. So a lot like, of catching up to do. Exactly. Exactly. Well, speaking of catching up, man, um, obviously, you know, y'all don't know, I'm a cowboy fan at heart. I want to see my man play today, but it seemed like Justin Jefferson. We're talking about an injury report in fantasy football. Uh oh. He um he's dealing with a minor case of turf toe. Oh. And as you know, turf toe, man, it can be something minor, but it can turn into something pretty significant. That's what Dion dealt with most of his career. Mm -hmm. You have to watch that. I mean, especially with you know him being a running quarterback. You know that that plays a lot into you know um, his capability to. Um, you know, get out there and compete. So that's definitely be a big hit for the Chicago Bears. No, Justin Jefferson. Oh, Justin. Shit, I'm sorry. But, oh, well, yeah, I mean, that's even worse. That's the number one guy. Yep. But you know he'll yeah. definitely play today either way. Now, he ain't missing that game. He was yeah. limited in practice. Um, But, you know, there's something definitely you know, to keep an eye on. And next up, this one, when I saw it, I thought maybe he was hurt, but then he got up, he came out, but then after the game, he came out, and that's one Dallas got it. When they had started off by saying he's expected to return this season, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not good. <laughs> um, he, he got he did get placed on IR. He has a shoulder injury. I hope it's not anything significant. I hate you know, even though it's a division rival, I hate seeing any player get injured, but he came down on the count of funky. And that's kind of the area where, you know, you end up you know, breaking your collarbone and things like that. So he's out at least until week 15. Man, that's a that's a big uh, that's a big blow right there. Especially that's usually the first week of fantasy uh, league playoffs. Yeah, that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if you, there's not too many good like real big point getter tight ends out there anymore nowadays to be honest like you need you need a Travis Kelsey uh Mark Andrews or a Dallas Goddard type players I'm probably forgetting a few to make up for your other positions that you might not be as powerful at say wide receiver or running back if someone goes down you rely on a power heavy tight end to get you those points to keep you above but I mean if this guy like that goes down what do you got? I got lucky with Juwan Johnson. Guys on a hot streak, two touchdowns or uh, two a touchdown last week and a touchdown two weeks ago. He's going for the hat trick this week. So I like yeah. the tight end there, Unc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the only one looking like he wants to play. Uh, I had I dropped LeBron um, Landry this morning, so uh, yeah, I definitely got some uh, hot picks for you know the wide receiver position. But let's get Anthony's uh, comment on here. Yes, sir. Anthony says, I have a big question. Is K. Allen playing? I don't want to start him, and he doesn't play. The good news is Allen is expected to play against the Chiefs, but what's going to be the significance of him playing? You know, he's still dealing with that hamstring. Yeah, I'm a K. I'm a uh, Allen owner myself, you know, and I've been pissed off with this guy because, you know, he's been, you know, messing up my lineup. You know, it's like, okay, hey, he's 
he, they, throughout the week, he says he's going to play. Then at the last minute, they say he's out. You know, and that's very frustrating when you're trying to, you know, set your lineup and, you know, Keenan Allen. Right, exactly. You know, he's a, a wide receiver one. So that's definitely uh, plays a role into it. But, you know, the team has been playing without him for the past couple of weeks. So, like you say, you know, what would be his impact if he get in? Will he make an immediate wide receiver one impact, even with the struggles of Justin Herbert? So it's a lot to consider even with starting him. But if you have any other – if you have better options, I would definitely, uh, you know, you know, weigh your options. Sorry. I was shaking, hey, I was shaking my head when you got into the last part of your uh, feedback because I knew where you was going with that. Yeah. Do we have better options? You might want to look at just in case. In <laughs> fact. Yeah, fact. because the they're, they're, they have Justin Herbert playing with practice squad – fifth string guys that you know aren't making his stats look as good either i go and i try to grab up the next up wide receiver and i'm like okay i'm gonna try to try try it out palmer i think the guy's name was he just isn't producing but with Allen being back mike williams i believe is still out he's just coming off an injury or how are we expecting him to go out and blow out and have a great game most people that come back from injury aren't normally that good and have a huge game so I have them. I've held them. We were talking about a couple of weeks ago about, you know, holding some players hostage on your teams, on your bench for a little bit. When my uh, my only other wide receiver I have is Hunter Renfro, I tend to keep the only guy that I think is going to get some points. So <laughs> I, I'm relying on him. Ball. I'm relying on him and Paris Campbell this week. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got two in the building. So he says that, um, you know, Keenan Allen is expected to play. Oh, why he, oh, wow. <laughs> then he follows it up with that. <laughs> Saints don't deserve no talk. <laughs> hey, you got a point there. <laughs> hey, hey, man. You're going, hey, two, you're going to the land of the champs this year, so uh, may, or, uh today. So uh -oh. make sure you uh make sure you got your Jones jersey on. <laughs> salute. <laughs> Click them heels and salute when you see greatness, sir. One thing I thought I'd never say, you know what? I'll probably have to admit. I don't dislike the Saints as much as most Saints fans dislike the Cowboys. They're kind of like a like a cousin to me. <laughs> so if they're not being successful, I know my I know my brother up here, you know, he's not happy. He ain't happy, I ain't happy. So it pains me to see y'all like that, man. Hopefully y'all get it together. I just know man. that coach, he ain't it. Agreed. I'm just glad my I'm just glad my daughter doesn't understand football fully yet because she'd be a very sad Saints fan right now. <laughs> <laughs> she just likes wearing the jerseys right now. It's gonna get worse when she gets older. They'll get it together. They you know they've had that taste of success. They had it for such a long time. Mediocrity or you know the, the um, environmental past. They're not gonna let that set in like that. I just think Drew Brees and Sean Payton took the winning mentality with them when they left. That's the problem. Everyone, like uh, like Unc said, Jawan Johnson's out there, and he's the only one that's really trying. You need to get a regular set quarterback that isn't booty and go with it and try to work it out. And I, I, I'm done sticking up for Jameis Winston. I'm done sticking up for Andy Dalton. Draft a young quarterback. I wish you guys had a first-round pick or at least a, a – Trade for some trade Mike Thomas away. Forget him. He's too injured. Trade him away. Get a first round pick for him. Go up there and get a CJ Stroud or something. The Saints can win with a guy like that. And he's already got a uh, he's already got chemistry with Chris Olave. That would work perfect. But are the Saints gonna do that? I don't work in the office. I don't make the choices, but that's what I do. Hey, definitely give a shout out to Maurice, man. You know, he's uh He's tapped in with us, our resident. Well, one, yeah, our resident, one of them, you know, Steelers fan. I don't know, you know, smoke's been gone, but he came out uh, when the Steelers beat the goddamn Saints, man. <laughs> he did. He yeah. up. <laughs> like, you know what, what, like, like, what you been? You know what I'm saying? The whole week, the whole time he's been, then, <laughs> <bring it win>. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Two said that Winston should be starting. Nah. Here's my thing, and it might be an unpopular theory for you. Um, if I'm the GM of the Saints, I know we're kind of getting off a little bit on the tangent, but it's good this morning. Um, I think one of your most valuable assets on that team right now is big play tech. If you can possibly use him as like, I hate to say it, but to trade to a team and get you know some type of draft capital for, for him, that can help y'all get you know the next quarterback that you need. 
because he he has some value, especially to a team that plays like a West Coast offense, especially where you can give them the ball in space and you know just let them go to work. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, you know, like to, you know, and that's been my whole thing the entire time. It's like he's the best player we have. You know, that's it. You know, it's like, oh, he's not a quote. Okay, yeah, that's true. But he wins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Makes you know, happen me, when he's on the field. Exactly. That's it. You know, and to me, a great quarterback wins. You know what I'm saying? Like, because how you got the ball in your hand the most, but you don't win. You know, that's what my whole biggest thing on Andy Dalton. You know, he has a losing record on Monday Night Football. We're we're losing. So the only thing that I feel, you know, with Jameis Winston, we'll be losing and we'll be having five interceptions. That'll be the difference. And it's like, you know, and that to me, that's that would implode the team. Like right now, we can blame. You know, you can pass the blame on anyone because we're badly, you know, we're losing games and we're not putting up offense, you know, putting up numbers. And that can be spread all around the team. But with Jameis Winston in the game, he's going to throw interceptions. <laughs> so I that, feel like that's, two trolling this morning. Yeah, yeah. We, we know you in the building. We appreciate him for tapped in. <laughs> he's out there in that cold. Isn't he, what, isn't he out there in New England? I mean, shit, it's cold. He got to keep his fingers warm or something. <laughs> <laughs> And hey, it says free Jordan Love and send him to the XFL. There we go. I like that idea. Anything XFL, especially if it's the Arlington Renegades. Shout out to the Arlington Renegades. No doubts, no doubts. Another big injury we have is, and we saw it, but uh, well, we heard about it rather. One Cooper Cup. He's expected to be out six to eight weeks. It's pretty much the same. They're not, they're not making the playoffs. Just sit them the rest of the year and just let them come back strong next year. Definitely would. Definitely would. I mean, you know, this might be something that galvanizes the offense because, you know, the offense has been non-existent. So, I mean, you know, they can, you know, depending on how Cooper Cup, you know, because we definitely know he was the leader of the team. Um, you know, he can rally the troops together. Like, hey, guys, you know what? Do this for me. And we know that, you know what I'm saying, we, we've seen teams give a second, you know, second win. And I think, like, you know, if he galvanizes the team, um, this could be their second win, you know, because they still do have some pretty decent um, – Wide receivers, they're not the best, but I mean, this would probably now, be the week to start Robinson. Exactly. So I was about to say, you know, now they have to spread the ball instead of focusing on giving Cooper Cup his, you know, his looks and his uh, his stats. So, you know, I'm definitely waiting to see how they come come back from this. But yeah, that's definitely a big injury. Yes, sir. This one, it's on here. <clears throat> it's not necessarily an injury, but it's kind of big news, kind of sort of. One Odell Beckham Jr. plans to visit the Giants and the Cowboys after Thanksgiving. Oh, so uh, it came out this morning. No surprise here. I mean, you know, because I went, I was here, and I said, you know what, um, <laughs> Dallas. Um, I said it in a group. Dallas, you know, I think right now that you know he's just giving New York Giants some attention because that's where he sees, you know, that's what that's who drafted him. But I definitely see him, you know, coming to uh, Dallas. Yep, yep. Because um, I, it, real quick, you got to remember who does Dallas play on Thanksgiving Day? They play the Giants. I think depending on who wins that game, it's probably going to have the upper hand on who's going to have the opportunity to sign them. Mm, good pivot. I like that. Good to be. But to be honest, though, you really he he wants to sign like a three to four year deal with whoever he goes to. Right. And he's, I think he's really thinking, cause he says he wants to go to a winner and be a contender for the next couple of years before he finally signs off and, you know, rides off to the sunset, which one of these two teams realistically has the chance of being the better team for the next four years. This is a giants one-off. Think about every time the giants have won a super bowl, they've sucked the next five years. They start off good. Then, they're gone for the next five. And this is one of those years where the Giants are good, probably not going to make the Super Bowl, but they're going to make a playoff splash, and then they're probably going to suck next year. Just saying. This is also a Danny Dimes contract year, I think, too, so he's just trying to show the heck out. But Dallas, as much as I hate the Cowboys, they are consistently good year in and year out. Would they chance to possibly go to a Super Bowl eh, maybe in the next 10 years? But we'll see about that. But that's that's just my opinion. I say he goes to Cowboys strictly because they have a consistent chance of being good every year. And in addition, oh, in addition to that, you know, one thing I make I feel because to me, Dallas is one leader, Somebody. wide receiver away. You know, um, 
and he has help out there. You know, who who is out? Who's who's his competition in? I mean, not his competition, but who is his help in the Giants in New York? Who's their wide receiver? Yeah, Slayton's been injured. Yeah. They just got rid of Tooney. Yeah, <laughs> and he's already acting up in Kansas City, <laughs> <laughs> but a good acting up. You know, he, he's already building that rapport with um with Patrick. Uh, what's up, Troy? Well, um, he has a question for us this morning. Connor or Brian Robinson? 0.25 per carry, one, 0.25 per carry, one per reception. Hmm. Connor or Brian Robinson, you know, um, wait, last week they, you know, the um, Arizona Cardinals, they dropped Eno Benjamin. So to me, that was a play to say like, you know what? Hey, James Connor is our guy. You know what? There is not enough opportunities here. So you got to seek opportunities elsewhere. So um, with that, you know, being said, you know, I think he's going to get more touches, you know what I'm saying? More opportunities. So, and um, yeah, just with that and Brian Robinson, who, who are they playing? Who's Washington playing today? Houston. Houston? Oh, exactly. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Um, and I wouldn't think he's a good, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, up on their run game this week. So I would definitely start James Conner. Because he can catch and he can run. So he's going to be on the field more and have more opportunities. And that fits y'all points together. If I mean y'all point um yeah. your porn system. If you got um receptions. right, exactly. One point receptions and you get carry, yeah. He's the better option. You're gonna have definitely more opportunity. Um not sure who that is, but whoa Dallas Super Bowl, don't know about that. I'm <laughs> That's uh, smoke right there, man. Is it? <laughs> TBD. That's TBD, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you, brother. <laughs> um, Anthony says, OBJ to Arizona next to D-Hop. That's crazy. That would be crazy. But I definitely don't see him going there because they coach for me. He, he signed an extension and going to get fired out in the same year. <laughs> facts. Facts. Yeah, I don't think that that – that chemistry wouldn't work. But, yeah, that's definitely something to think about. Um, somebody that is playing today, Z- um, Zadarius Smith, will play against Dallas. Um, he's been out. I think he's been like a week or two. But um, that's big for them in their pass rush. Um, Demarcus Lawrence, foot, will play with the Vikings. The same foot he fractured last year. That's probably going to be something that's ongoing. And this next one. Is so dear, near and dear to my heart. Mark Andrews is expected to play today. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I and and I did get the Schefter uh, tweet update. He okay. is active. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I really, really needed that. Um, but on the other side, he's expected to play, but Lamar Jackson has an illness. Mm-hmm. He's been quite oh, well play. He will play. He will play. Um, I think Gus really Edwards have to rely on his arm today, <laughs> which is I, gonna suck. I, I about to say it sounds like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that is a shot. Hold on. I'll take that one. There you go. <laughs> Make it official. Uh, Shout out to you, fam, first. They say Gibson or Foreman in a PPR. Man, I got Foreman. You know, I've been a fan of Foreman starting because to me, he's in a running back offense. You know, that whole offense was get get around CMC. So, you know, they can't make too many adjustments outside of that. So he's going to get the touches. And he's going to, um, you know, he's going to get the opportunity to receive the ball. But I would definitely go with Foreman. I will go with Foreman strictly on the fact that Baker Mayfield's playing today and they don't trust his arms. So they'll be running a lot more for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're they playing Baker because they have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? With, hey, does anyone know what's going on with Darnold? Is he still I was just about to ask that. I have no idea. Oh, because, just, you know, as, just that bad. I always – yeah, I always thought he was a trash bag. I thought he was horrible, like absolute garbage. And I'm like, you know what? We haven't seen him play in over a year. Are they going to give this guy a chance again, or has he just finally succumbed to mediocrity in the quarterback room? I don't know. <laughs> it, says, it sounds like you hate him on my Washington. 
you're picking everybody but my players from Anthony. Hey, I got McLaren and I got Robinson on a couple of my teams. So I rocked with Watson to hey, an extent. And major respect to you because you might be the only uh, – what are they again on? Oh, the what the fucks. You're yeah. the only person I know that is a fan of them. I've never seen a Washington fan in my life. So much respect to you. <laughs> he called you a Bigfoot sighting, man. <laughs> <laughs> but now nah, I'm a Heineke fan. Like, to me, that's the best player. He should be starting from the get-go. Facts. Facts. And the team just plays better when he's on the field. Facts. They make me nervous when Heineke is out there as a Cowboy fan. Because I know what Wentz is. We beat Wentz up every time we play. Heineke, he can do some things. Facts. Um, we got uh, Gus Edwards has a hamstring. He's unlikely to play against the Panthers today. But that's kind of like, that's almost like a prerequisite for a Ravens running back. You, yeah. you, you got to be injured in, in the minimum of, of and be available for three at least three games a year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the Raiders, we got Devontae Adams. He has an abdomen, but he's an abdomen injury, but he is expected to play against the Broncos. Okay. Um, Zeke Elliott, knee injury, expected to play um, against the Vikings, but I did see they're going to ease him in. They got to remember they got a game, another game Thursday. So oh. he's probably not going to have a lot of catches, if any. I mean, a lot of uh, touches. Um, it's gonna be minimum, maybe around the goal line or something like that. But you're still gonna, if you got Pollard, start him over Zeke if you got a choice between the two. I was starting Pollard over Zeke. Anyway, <laughs> right? right, right. <laughs> Guilty. Right. <laughs> no doubts, no doubts. Uh, Mike Williams, we talked about him earlier. He's good to go for Sunday night football. Oh, I thought he was out. Uh, That's interesting for Herbert owners. According, this is um, as of last night, according to source, Mike Williams has been cleared and will play against the Chiefs. Mm, nice. That spark might be back for the Chargers. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dad joke for the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, D-Hop, hamstring, he's questionable for Monday. He's been dealing with the injury all week, and his status still remains up in the air. Uh, Colt McCoy is not on the injury. Kyler is questionable for Monday. So this is one of those things, man, you got to kind of pick your poison. You know, mm -hmm. D-Hop may be out. Murray may be out. McCoy is available. Uh, going back to that 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 Connor question earlier, and he may be all they have. <laughs> Facts. I mean, this is that part of the year where these players that are injured or these players that are doubtful expected to play to where, like, this is the point of season where they got to play through some of these injuries as long as it's not too serious. True. I think Hopkins plays because this division is another one of the, you know, the, the lower tiers, not quite a high tier division, but it's close. I mean, Seattle's leading it with six to four, and they're sitting at four and six. They can turn this around real quick, but everyone's got to be playing at a high level. So I don't see any way how Hopkins is not playing, especially since they can turn this season around. I don't think the Rams got a chance, though. But anybody, any of them three teams can make it to the playoffs. It just depends on what shows up. And I got nothing – truthfully, I got nothing against Kyler Murray. I just think he's toxic to the franchise because of how he's been acting this year. I see him he got baseball in the not-too-distant future. He got, that, he got that money bag, and now he's just – He's turning to a dick. <laughs> <laughs> He's always been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, money just shows out what you've always been. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, this one is kind of, I guess, significant, especially if you got Danny Dimes as your quarterback. Uh, Josh Reynolds is ruled out for week 11. They really don't have too many wide receivers left there. Wendell's out. Uh Gall Galladay, Galloway, whatever his name is, out. I mean, they don't have anything. He needs to change the scenery. I, it's hard for me to understand how he was the man in Detroit, but he's a shell of himself in New York. Yeah. Hey, you just see – to me, you just see what's happening. That's like how um, wide receivers go to die off in uh, Baltimore. 
<laughs> <That's true. laughs> you better get you some blocking gloves on when you go to Baltimore. The wide receiver. <laughs> For real, hey, well, they, that's where your boy Willie Sneed went out to die. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I was a fan of him for real. Anthony on it this morning. He says, "I don't think Murray's injured. He's playing Call of Duty." <laughs> that part, and if it's not, and it's followed up by that new uh, God of War. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now this one doesn't have any fantasy implications, but Chase Young, who was supposed oh, to make his, his appearance. He's not out. I mean, he's not active for week 11. Let's see. Hold on, wait. I'm just going to – I got to throw this out there because I think you you jumped over him. Hey, DJ Reader for the Bengals. Hey, that defensive line's coming back alive, baby. <laughs> Cincinnati's going to freaking tear them up today. They're, Pittsburgh's going down. I hate to see them. They're going down. <laughs> Who do you like? <laughs> Look. Being from Cincinnati, I hate just about every AFC North team. The only team I had any bit of like for was because of Baker Mayfield, but I wasn't rooting for the Browns that year. But I don't – the three teams I hate the most that I will talk the most shit about, number one, the Ravens. Number two, the Steelers. Number three, I'm sorry, the Cowboys. <laughs> uh, hey, don't worry. Bowl. Everybody love you, man. We love Super you. Yeah. Old-ass Super Bowl. <laughs> Oh, man. It's fair, fair enough. Understood, man. Uh, J.D. McKenzie is heading to IR for the Washington. What the fucks? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore. He's got an abdomen injury. He's ruled out for week 11. <sighs> Do we got to talk about him? It's so hard <laughs> to say goodbye. Hold on. I didn't know he's been out this long. He's, he hadn't played since week five. Jesus. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that explains something, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, explains why I said it's time for us to, uh, you know, <laughs> give a wow. talk. I was saying. 14 and 3, but I mean, it was my adult dyslexia. It was really, I had it backwards. 3 and 14, man. I was like, you know, look. <laughs> Fault my head, not my heart, man. I got to tell the truth. <laughs> I think you guys need to stay away from the Ohio State players. <laughs> so really? I, take back my, I take back my comment about C.J. Stroud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, Nikhil Harry won't suit up today. Like he he matters. Just, illness. Uh, Cole Kemet cleared for week 11. He seemed to have been coming on a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Hold on. He plays for Houston? Cole? Yeah. No, he plays for... The Bears, right? Yeah, the Bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You see, every running quarterback needs a good tight end. Yes. Cole Komet is an underdog to me and has been for the last three years. He is a, uh, a very, like, under – what's the word I'm thinking of? Underrated? Uh, un- unappreciated, underrated, unappreciated, underrated. Uh, tight end. as well. Yes. Justin Fields is playing the Diet Lamar Jackson game, but he can throw <laughs> a little bit better. But every good running <laughs> quarterback needs a good tight end to throw to, just like Lamar's got Mark. Same like the early Patrick Mahomes had Kelsey that whole time. They need to use Cole Komet like that because he's actually very good, and he can get you some points when he's healthy. So him being back is big for Justin Fields because that tight end position is always a dump off. People underutilize the tight end position in general nowadays anymore. Gronk in New England was the last time you saw him. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Jimmy Graham. That there, I mean, there was a highlight moment for tight ends back when Gronk and Jimmy were playing because there were two other tight ends that uh, the guy for the Chargers. I can't, I can't think. I'm my brain's fried right Bates. now. But yes, and then the, they had a they they the, that's how big the tight end position was back then, and they started to get more plays, and the tight ends were starting to get more value in fantasy. So they can bring Jeremy that Shockey. back because every because every yeah Jeremy Shockey too. You see the tight end be more more used in a running game 
So I think, uh, or in the uh, running quarterback game. So he could blow up. Keep an eye on this guy. Agreed. Um, Curtis Samuel, he's been clear for week 11. David's been dealing with the uh, shin injury, so it'd be good to go for um, against the Texans. Man, I used, to run track. I used to run track, man. Them shin injuries are, yeah, that's nothing um, nothing easy to get over. Them shin splints, shin injuries, yeah. Oh, you ran track? I didn't know that. Hey, man, how you think I got away from the police? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm telling you, I got stories, man. Look, they seen, it was like, boom, you hit that door, they called me a baby. <laughs> Go. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh-huh. Logan Thomas uh, dealing with a rib injury. He's been cleared for week 11. He's been missing. I had high expectations for him, and he's laid a goose egg. So, shit, he might as well have been on the bench. True that. Devontae Smith, knee injury, cleared for week 11. And this is injury. I mean, this is interesting. Devontae Smith, knee, A.J. Brown, ankle. Minor things, but this is week 11. It's getting cold outside. These injuries tend to magnify. And the Eagles have essentially been healthy throughout the season. This is a crucial path for them right now. Yeah. I mean, I made this point earlier in the week. Teams that don't get hit with the injury bug at the beginning of the season get it at the end of the season. And the Eagles have been very lucky, and they might start getting hit with it now. I mean, it's it's not looking good for them. Their big interior, what's his name, uh, Davis from Georgia that they drafted? Yeah. He's been out for the like last four or five weeks. They've been kind of quiet about it. He had a return, and they go out th- this past week after getting gashed by Washington. They go out and they sign two interior linemen. So who we were both active today? They really? That's kind of the couch. <laughs> yeah. Go, Jonathan Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a lunch today, please. It was Ndamukong and Sue, and I forgot the other guy's name. Um, he used to play for the uh, Chargers, I think. I can't remember the other guy's name. Yeah, that didn't, that Sue fella's gonna <laughs> yeah, it's gonna add some uh, tenacity to that front to that yeah, front. Everybody, line. everybody better be wearing a cup on the field, though. Yeah, he he's stepping on you, literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Jerick McKinnon, hamstring and shoulder. He's been cleared for week eleven. Jerk. Jerk. Marquez, Valdez, Scanley, Valdez, Scanley, uh, illness. He's also been cleared for week 11. So, you know, Patty's getting his toys back. <laughs> yeah, that, I was worried about that for him because I really – I like seeing Patrick Mahomes do good. I don't know why. I just think he's one of the most entertaining quarterbacks to watch. And he – they went out and got a receiver for him or two, and then they lost three. He, he was one of them. Uh, Juju was the other one. There's another guy that went out. I was like, well, I guess I'm glad they went out and got Tony. Shit. <laughs> but but now they got they got embarrassment of riches right now. They got all those guys back this week. And then they also people. they still got this guy that plays tight end for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Kelsey. <laughs> hey, throw one of them, th- throw one of them at running back since uh Clyde Edwards Hilaire can't figure it out. Man, that guy's been a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> And rookie, I told y'all he had 16 carries last week. Definitely, he's on the rising in the temp. So, yeah, that's coming from the running back guru. We might need to listen to this. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> he be knowing. He be knowing. The running back whisper. <laughs> hey, but he didn't say nothing about this next guy. So that's why no one played Deion Jackson, and he only got two fantasy points two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. Oh man. So yeah, uh, you know, Taylor's back healthy, supposedly. Um, got Jeff Saturday in there as the head coach, make, coaching his second game. Can he shock the world again? Well, beating the Raiders ain't shocking. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people picked that. <laughs> Shout out to Dominique. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for, I was like, I wonder if he's gonna be able to throw that in it all today. <laughs> You know he is. <laughs> but uh it's it's gonna be interesting, you know, to see. I do think that is the one weakness for the um the the Eagles is that you know their run game. I don't know what's going on with them. Um they've been beat up the last couple of games. Yeah, they you know 
that they split the last two games, but I think people figured out a weakness on their defense. You know, definitely going against that secondary, you asking for troubles. Yeah. <laughs> um, and generally, a defense is not going to be good at all, all three levels. So, the, you know, they've been attacking, you know, that that um, interior line and um, exposing them linebackers, putting them out on space. Um, this guy I feel sorry for, man. Uh, Brandon Cooks, hip and wrist, he's officially been cleared for week 11. He he just he just don't want to be there. And I feel for you, brother. You, know, you could have had a star on him. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to see how he does. Again, like I always say every week, and not just called the Mrs. is a Texas fan, Houston is not as bad as their record dictates. It's an indication of how bad they are, but they just ain't gonna lay down for anybody. You can tell you must was you could tell you as a youth head coach or something. <laughs> you see, I thought <laughs> uplifting that was like, no, bro. Yeah, they <laughs> are telling what the record says. <laughs> Got to be able to one can't tear him down all the time, man. I see that. That's, that's very, you know, that's very becoming of you, sir. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, this one might be kind of big. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie, he returned to practice on Friday. He's been cleared for week 11. I would think he's like, what, the third receiver for the um, Bills? Yeah, I don't think they're going to be throwing the ball too much in that weather out there. Rough buff. No, no, they're, 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 they, uh, they moved to the four. Oh, they're in Detroit. Okay. Yep. They're yeah. playing inside. Ah, Bad game. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be a high scoring game. And then I think that's pretty. Oh, one last one I want to address. I know um, Jake, not from State Farm, and I were talking about it earlier. Matthew Stafford, he looks like he's going to play. He's been removed from the injury report. Yeah, I knew that. And that looks like that's going to be our injuries for today. Hold on, we got a question down here. We got who we got. How you doing, Bailey? Morning to you as well. I'm have a good one for you. Fields or Lamar? I'm going to defer to Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Who's available on the waiver wire? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. If you only got those two, I'd play Fields in all honesty. And it's not because I'm a Lamar hater. It's because Lamar is. Coming off a of sickness, you don't know what Lamar you're getting today. He might have a flu game, but probably not. Fields is on a hot streak. You got to play him. Fields, is, yeah, I think I think one week I started him kind of out of a necessity, and he got me like 79 points. But so don't tell me that was a week he got you 59, 60, whatever that was. That was ridiculous. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to say this, you know, um, yeah, right, just piggybacking off what you said, Jake. You know, last game going into the bye against my Saints, Lamar looked trash. Just keep it 1,000. I mean, he had one passing attempt, uh, 133 yards. I mean, that's not going to cut it, you know. So coming out against the Carolina defense who doesn't rank that much lower than the Saints, I mean, so like you said, you know, I would definitely take Justin Fields as the better option because he's been he's been rock star <clears throat> like – Two two weeks ago, like, oh no, Justin Fields was trash. That boy would score like 40 points. I'm a Justin Fields fan after that. <laughs> yeah, he's I think he's starting to figure it out. He's yeah. also going against the Falcons too, and the Bengals freaking dropped a <laughs> dump truck on their ass two weeks ago. So <laughs> <laughs> dropped the dump truck. Nice. Oh man. Let me see. Let's see, Veda says, I feel that been going back and forth with those two. Okay. Well, like I said at the beginning, if you do well, we take all the credit. If you don't, we don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, we're gone. <laughs> we're going to take our first break for the day, gentlemen. Y'all hold on tight. We'll be back with the stardom and sit Be back about 15, 20 seconds. What's up, world? Kyrie Robinson, man. New Orleans Saints veteran. Hey, man, make sure you guys go check out my guy, man, STWF, the media, man. Check them guys out. Y'all want to get sports talk, sports talks with players, with fans, anything like that, man. Go check them guys out, man. That's the place to be if you want to talk sports. Who that nation? And we're back, I think. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> We've got our stardom and sit which is kind of the meat and potatoes of our uh, 
<laughs> it ain't all, it ain't my fault. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we got a stardom and sit which kind of like the meat potatoes of our, our show on Sunday mornings. This is where we take the in-depth look at it. And we have some pretty good, you know, some hot sports opinions on here. And this first one makes me nervous. I'm like one of the weirdest Cowboy fans ever. I don't go to the mantra of this year is our year every year. Nah, sometimes we just trash. And I got to call it what it is. <laughs> and No, nah, you shoot the shit. You're honest. I like that. <laughs> you know how this, bad it was at Cam Newton year? I had to say it too. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I just say that. like. <laughs> And this first, uh, the the start of the week, I'm kind of mixed on it, and I preface that by saying I have no idea how it's going to come out because I'm still trying to figure out where he's at this year. And the start of the week is one Dakota Rain Prescott uh, going up against Minnesota. Um, they say like he didn't have a good game last week. There was no two picks. Um, yeah, we Two terrible picks. No, even though. It wasn't on him, but they still with two picks that go in the sheet. Um, how y'all feeling about him going up against Minnesota this week, who are ranked 18th against opposing quarterbacks? Excuse my language, but I think CBS just big mm-hmm. right in here. But uh, <laughs> no, I think that this is a bad matchup for Dak, and you're going to have to rely heavy on the run game because these defensive linemen are are going to. They've been coming after the quarterback all year. The, the Minnesota's defense is what's winning them the games in a lot of honesty. They had a really, really tough game against Buffalo. But that's the top offense in the league. What do you expect? They don't have bad corners. Harrison Smith's covering the back, and he's awesome. They're getting a major linebacker back. I mean, this is – I don't know what CBS is seeing here, but I think that this is a bad day to start Dak, in my opinion. I agree with you on that. Especially, like, last week he threw 46 passes. Everybody that's Cowboy fans know the more Dak throws, the worse the team does. He needs to keep around 20, 25 attempts and maybe about 35, 40 running plays if you want to be successful. Now, from a wow, fantasy I, standpoint, no, he might help you out. No, throwing that many times, but you're going to either sink or swim with him. No, I don't yeah. think help. I don't think, and that was because that was, that was my second point. I was like, you know, with Kirk Cousins, you know, running a um, offense and throwing as well as they have been and scoring, you know, he's going to feel compelled to throw the ball and he's going to make bad decisions, you know. And so I was like, man, I was like, yeah, wait, what he said? Well, yeah, what you said too. So yeah, you know, it's a bad day to start Dak Prescott. You know, I don't think it'll be successful. Jamie says, I agree with that. He had a rough time last week, but he always prevails. I don't know if this week going to be that week. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Anthony. You uh, you got a fan over here, man. The Cowboys problem is not Dak. It's Kellen Moore. Take his ass to Boise State. <laughs> <laughs> you said that with your chest. It was like. <laughs> Wasn't like two years ago, everyone was praising Kellen Moore, though, no. saying as the next head coach. I swear that happened. I heard you the know, same thing. I mean, hey, you know, I heard him. It. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has ties to the clapper. That's all I need to know. <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> He said he got ties to the clapper, huh? Yeah, he man. Had to get rid of just just because all the people he know. <laughs> <laughs> get that stench out of there, man. <laughs> oh, oh man. man, that's funny. Um, but the quarterbacks to start, I'm gonna throw these names out and tell me how y'all feel about them. Uh, Justin Herbert against Kansas City, Kirk Cousins against Dallas, A. A. Rod Rogers going against Tennessee. That? How you think about those three? We seen A Rod start. We seen A Rod stink up the place. Yeah. Yep. And he pointing fingers now, even more. <laughs> 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 That's a recipe for disaster. And I think we talked about it last week too, where somebody within the organization said, I think or it might have been one of the players said that they think you know love is ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a stretch, a media reach. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he's ready to go like that, bro. Nah. You know, maybe go to the XFL, you know what I'm saying? Come to the uh, Arlington Renegades, but yeah. <laughs> um, well, the, uh, the other two guys, though, knowing that his two best receivers are coming back, 
Justin Herbert, absolutely start this guy. Mm-hmm. He's had woes because of who he's had to play with so far, and Austin Eckler's been carrying it for him. So, yeah, yeah start Herbert. And uh, like I said, as much as I love the Vikings, I always believe Kirk's going to Kirk somehow. So this is going to be whoever has the best defensive plays today. This, Kirk Cousins and Dak remind me of that Spider-Man meme. They point at each other. <laughs> Kirk Cousins is the white Dak, and Dak is the white Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and the same guy, man. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, Jamie says, you can't trust Aaron anymore. He's rusty. Yeah, he might be washed. I think he just don't give a Washington what the fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, yeah. he's gone, yeah. bro. Like, you know, I think that's what it is. You know, I think he just, his time in G, um, GB, Green Bay, it's just gone. It's coming gone. That's it. What do you see him going if he's not, if he's not there next year? To that island that he went to with the, with that woman and those two guys. That's where he's going, man. He's going back to Akuna Matata, man. He's not playing football no damn more. He's going to the Astro Plane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we got who, who is just calling this today? Uh, let me see. We got. I don't know where to go. Where to go? Who is this? Somebody on the team. Steelers upset today. Is that? There would have to be two. Okay. But he, you all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be on YouTube next. <laughs> uh, Bailey has a question for us. Pitts or Higby, both are going up against top defenses at their position. Mm. Hmm. I have no faith in Pitts. I have him on the team. He gets me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, <laughs> I was going to go with Higby because, you know, with the fact that Cooper Cup gone, um, Matthew Stafford, you know, he, he's a little hobbled. So he's going to look, you know, for the quick out. So I would definitely go with uh, Higby. Yeah, someone said it in a live earlier this week that Atlanta needs to stop ruining Kyle Pitt's career. I mean, they really are doing it. So, yeah, I'm going Higby. I'm going to be all day. Yeah. And he got Marcus Mariota, bro. Like, that that's it, bro. It's like this guy's the only one in NFL history as a quarterback to throw himself <laughs> a freaking touchdown. You know what I'm saying? Like, he do it. He called it and, yeah. And it was a touchdown. Like, I can't get behind him, bro. <laughs> Beta said Pitts got him one point last week. <laughs> That's a participation point. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you know what? That's probably the PPR for him catching. <laughs> he caught the ball and got tackled <laughs> on the five. Man, that's horrible. Uh, Lions beat the Giants, too. Nah. You bleeding blue over there, Dad. That's two. He bleeding blue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Anthony says, I need the Cowboys to take an L the next two games so Washington can come up. Uh-oh. Hey, damn it. Look, look, I'm about to say, he's just <laughs> up on you now. He was like, oh, look, like you got a fan here now. Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me that back. We need a, <laughs> we need a Peter Griffin, you've been revoked. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's on the next uh, drop. <laughs> uh, yeah, two wheels wild today, Jamie. Yeah, he. <laughs> He's delirious. He's out there in that cold. Probably got a windbreaker on. Trying to be tough. <laughs> hey man, he's gonna go so he's gonna go so crazy. He's gonna be leaving the game saying, "Go Pats, go Pats, go Pats." Oh wow, he said that's in the standard league. <laughs> he got that one point. Hell, oh, <laughs> man, yeah, they're gonna. They need to. Uh, I don't know what they're holding on to because they got they got the rookie or I can't remember what his name is. Um, it's no in there too. I forgot I had him. Pick it. Prick it, someone. Start him. What, what are you doing with Iota? Are you talking about the wide receiver on? No, uh um the quarterback. The quarterback that they just got drafted. What is oh, that? Oh uh you're talking about uh why am I for Kenny Pitt? Really? There you go. Really, really, there you go. Oh De- Des Ritter. Okay, I thought we yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah, that guy. Thank I you. Thought, Andrew, I didn't even talk about Atlanta. Yeah, thank the you. Eight. Appreciate it. They went to the same college. That's why she knows. 
Uh, sleepers for this week, uh, we got a couple of them. I don't know about this third one. But um, <laughs> we got Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, Jimmy G, and Russ. Russ can cook as a sleeper. Uh-oh. But he is going up against the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason he's on my list. <laughs> Dominique, I don't know you, but it's true. <laughs> oh man. That's bad. I think uh, I yeah, like they, Jimmy G in there. Yes, I do too. Uh, he's got some weapons. They're getting healthy. Um Kittles was waking up. Mm-hmm. So I definitely I think yeah he's a he's a good sleeper to start but I mean you know he's still you know he's still Jimmy G of the 49ers you know what I'm saying so it's still Kirk that Cousins like exactly <laughs> you know what I'm saying so it's still that one piece and then they're going up against uh the Arizona Cardinals so I mean you know they they're familiar with each other so yeah Those I don't know. matchups are always difficult Right. Hey, man, right. don't talk about Jimmy Handsome like that. <laughs> Jimmy G is not Kirk Cousins like. Did Kirk Cousins ever take his team to three NFC championships and win the Super Bowl? True, true, true. Well, it could be argued and that's that before they had a team. Oh, go ahead. I didn't oh, it could be argued that that was a defense. I was, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a he's a former Patriot. I'm wearing his Patriot number here. Julian Edelman loved him. That's where he got the nickname Jimmy Handsome. I, I got a root for the money. Yes, I okay. Love Jimmy. Right, you know what? You know what I'm saying? Listen. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair right. Enough. You know, the, the fans love him. He's a fan favorite. <laughs> I'm, I'm, be, I'm, I'm being a rose giver and I don't need to be, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jamie yeah. says DJ Reader is back this week. Pickett is going to be eating grass all day. I already said something about that earlier. <laughs> Me and my wife are on the same thought process. <laughs> Pittsburgh ain't got a chance today. Appreciate you, Bailey. Got a follow from me. Appreciate the help, guys. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Appreciate it. Coach don't, Coach, don't you dislike the Steelers, too? Don't they have a rivalry in some way, shape, or form from the old days? Well, here's the thing, man. I'm a weird football fan. <laughs> I like football in general. Do I understand? Now, I have more dislike for fans than the organizations themselves. Oh. And I'm a little bit biased towards the Steelers because obviously, you know, growing up, it was always Cowboys, Steelers, robbery. But I went to high school with me and Joe Green's sons. They were older than me, but, you know, I kind of – he was a Dunkerville person at one point in time. And he's a Texas native. So for that simple fact, I'm a little bit biased towards him. Now, I do know we had to beat them at least one time. We have more players in the uh, Hall of Fame. But, you know, still organization, they're a story organization. That they've had, what, three coaches in like the last 60 years or something like that? Yeah. So, you know, I, I can't hate on them for that. You know, they're great. They're also, they're great. I mean, yeah, you're right. They're, they're tied with the most Super Bowls in league history, too. They got six. Yeah, yeah. If they no, I probably say if there's probably one again, I don't have dislike towards teams. I have dislike towards fans. Like, like Philly. Philadelphia. See, I like I but <laughs> they fans. I can't stand y'all. <laughs> Dang, I'm okay. I felt that myself. Look, bro, I come in peace. <laughs> <laughs> they need to know their place. Yeah, you won the seventeen. But y'all still bottom dwellers. But y'all don't teams, get me. I have some great teams. Don't get me started on Buffalo or Baltimore fans. Yeah. That, yeah. Shout out to uh Kenneth, man. He's uh tapped in with us. He's a Saints fan. Yes, sir. You know, it's like, man, it's like people come to your door, they knock on your door <laughs> where the food at. Well, hey man, how you doing? He said, Look, good morning, fella. No game today. Yes, sir. We will be streaming the New Orleans Saints game at <laughs> you ready to go. That's a real fan there. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny? Like, that's, small talk. that's great that he still wants to follow his team. Like I tell my kids who like that has the Cowboys ever been good? Yeah, at one point in time, but y'all we know my oldest one was in diapers. She's damn near 30. But uh <laughs> 
But they was good at one point in time, but then I got to let them know this ain't bad. I remember when I was growing up during those 80s, we had to listen to them on the radio because we were blacked out locally. They was giving away tickets when you buy $100 worth of groceries. <laughs> Hey, real quick, we just hit an hour on the show. I just want to throw it out there that I'm sure we got a nice little crowd of people going on here. If everybody could give us a share. We've had a lot of shares recently, and we really appreciate yes, getting the brand out there. So thanks for all the shares, all the comments, all the likes, all the subscribes and everything. Just wanted to give an hour shout out to y'all. Appreciate that. Yeah, that was nice. Great call out. Great call out. Uh, Bailey says Browns have had more quarterbacks in a single season than the Steelers have had in coaches in 60 years. That's sad. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> man, he's up early. He's in oh, Cali. That was a, it's early out there. Yeah. yeah that yeah. was that that was that great jersey I saw, that one Browns jersey. It showed it had number two on the back and had the main name of the guy the jersey the original was. And then it has names going all the way around the jersey, all the way to the most <laughs> recent guy. And I'm losing I'm like, oh my God, that's terrible. That is a lot of quarterbacks. Wow. <laughs> and why they're the uh, Cleveland Browns. <laughs> we got a question. Madison or Algier? Well, I mean, must well, hey, hold on. Sorry, Cordell Patterson is still back, is back. But I mean, I was, you know, saying that guy Alger since earlier this season, you know, so I'm still a fan of him. And Madison, he is a number two. They're two. both, they're both kind of the backups, but they both get snaps, so it's kind of hard to pick between both of them. But I think. Al Algier, Algier, I think that he will get more snaps because Patterson is still recovering. Right. So I think that's the best bet. Yeah, because he's the true running back. You know, to me, Cordell Patterson is still the trick play guy. So he's on there with the boomer bust. But you know, Algier, Algier, whatever his name is, like Jake said, you know, he's going to get the true touches. Agreed. Jamie said, "Black that all the time while I was growing up. I remember crying when we won a playoff game last year. My kids looked at me like I was a fool. Hey, I can relate to that. I bawled and popped champagne when my Texas Rangers made the World Series. I think I was going to ever see that. Oh, wait. Hold on. I just by under, you know, the coach who came from John McDonough, my high school, in New Orleans. You know, just, just, got, just got to put the plug out there. That's all. I think I'm, I think I'm going to embarrass my wife later and send her screaming and crying to the group later. <laughs> It was, I caught that on video. It was it was phenomenal. I was happy for her. I was a very happy husband that day. She was she was on she was on cloud nine for a week. But when they made the Super Bowl, I was like, okay, is this gonna stop soon? She's freaking out every weekend. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, I can understand that because my godson, he's a huge bingo fan. You know, I talked to him about seven this morning, you know, and he had the freaking bingles hat. I'm like, bro. How do you have a Bengals hat on already? And you just waking up. He's like, Yeah, you know, I gotta get up. So I can wake up, I gotta put my Bengals hat. I'm like, bro, what happened to brushing your teeth, man? I mean, and this freaking he got a sunny cap on. It ain't just like a baseball cap. He got a cap where his head is sweating. I'm like, bro, I know it is fucking hot in that house. But yeah, shout out to y'all Bengals fan. I just I just read that comment. Why would anyone wanna I I don't like Bryce Young. I think he's too small for the league. I don't think he's that good. He's on possibly the worst Alabama team that they've ever had in the last, like, 15 years. So I would not tank for Bryce Young. Best quarterback coming out of the draft this year, whether anyone likes it or not, and I am biased because I am Ohio State, is C.J. Stroud. <laughs> <laughs> but there's hey. nothing against Bryce Young. I understand he won a Heisman last year, but he had a lot of, you know, Mac Jones players on that team still. So. Not my point to be making, but I just I that Bryce Young is a guy to stay away from. Jamie says we oh. wake up ready to eat, talking about the Bengals fans. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You just got up 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh man. Um sleep uh actually QB's descent is just kind of ironic, but you got Matthew Stafford and Jerry Goff. <laughs> <laughs> the two guys are swapping. That's one hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and That's... Derek Carr. Dominique. We knew that. <laughs> uh, bust alert. We talked about him earlier. Marcus Mariota. 
He should be up there for every week. I'm yeah, not trying. I am one for one on this, and I'm not trying to ruin my record here, but I'm going to. Today is the day that if Marcus Mariota isn't doing something or winning that game, we might see Des Ritter today. I think we might. We should. I call I called <laughs> Kenny I called Kenny Pickett going in that game that one week, and I'm going I'm like I said, I don't want to ruin my streak here, but Des Ritter might get his chance today. Mm. That's 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 pretty that's pretty uh hot sports opinionist right there, man. I like it. I like it. And that's why we got Call It the Fantasy Football Insight Live Show, because we provide great insight that you can't watch on TV. That's right. You can only catch it here. Sports we'll talking real first. and raw. <laughs> All right. So what we got, Bailey, he says, I remember when Vegas Dave was all in on car. Don't hear him say shit now. But excuses. Nope. <laughs> like Bubba Dub say, trash. <laughs> <laughs> and i agree jamie ritter does have talent they need to you know like, like your better half says today might be that day <laughs> <laughs> and watch pits go off <laughs> oh that'd be awesome um running backs to start david montgomery antonio gibson devin singletary and cordell patterson we were just talking about David Montgomery earlier, weren't we? Yep. Robinson as well. I mean, it's Gibson tough. as See, well. That, that was my main question. I'm serious. I, I'm yeah. stuck between two guys. This could be que question of the week for you right here. Just call it one more time just in case. Am I starting Dante Foreman, David Montgomery, or Ramondre Stevenson? You can pick two. Stevenson's for sure. Yeah. I got him on like four teams. <laughs> 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 um. Montgomery, that team there's, leads the league in rushing, but a lot of that comes from the quarterback. Yeah. But there is no Khalil Herbert. It's okay. just Montgomery now. Okay. So that's why I'm saying it's tough. Chubb's playing. I don't care. But it's between Montgomery, Foreman, and uh, Stevenson. Um, put your opinion in here, too. I'll listen. I got um, Montgomery starting, man. Got to start Montgomery. He's the only option. Like, He's gonna, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a touchdown guy. You know, with me, with my thing, I, you know, I go on who has the, you know, the more, the propensity to score more touchdowns. And that's Montgomery. To me, that's, to me, that's what shows a true number one. But so, after what Foreman's been doing, that's where the tough part comes. It's tough. You playing both I, got, I, don't, I don't know how. I, yeah, you're right. I might be putting in Montgomery. So, I mean, you know, if it's a, you know, if it's a flex position, you know, but it all depends on what you expect out of that position. You know, like my um, running backs, those are, those are going to give me touchdowns. My flex, they got the um, possibility to give me big plays and touchdowns. So, you know, that's how I go with, you know, with, you know, looking at my lineup, you know, so, you know, if it's a flex position, that's, that's what I would consider. But, you know, Foreman, yes, because the offense, like I said earlier, the offense is geared around the running, uh, the running back. So to me, that's the only thing that makes Foreman, you know, that appealing. But they're going against the Ravens. So let me throw yeah, I mean, that my, my running back room is way too freaking crowded. It's Chubb, it's Montgomery, it's Ramondre, it's Najee, it's Dante. That's bad. I need to get rid of some of these bags. Let me ask y'all this. Uh with Foreman. They're gonna be one dimensional this week. Because I don't know if Baker has it in. So I agree. Defense is going to be keyed up to stop the run and make him beat them with the pass. Right. And that's going to be a low scoring game. I mean, because what games are most boring to watch? Freaking Baltimore games. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they're boring to watch. And, you know, if um, Lamar Jackson is not running up and down the field, it is freaking boring to watch. So, I mean, they're not going to be stressed. The offense is not going to be stressed to make big plays. Like you said, they're going to be containing Baker Mayfield just to make completions, move the ball, and then maybe, you know, kick a field goal or just put, you know, something in the end zone. <clears throat> so that's why I'm like, I'm leaning towards recommending, you know, while I'm recommending David Montgomery. Um, is the running back guru. Roll with it. Hey, there it is. Michael Carter or Najee Harris? My, oh, man. Michael oh. Carter is like almost a guaranteed number two now. But Najee Harris hasn't had that great of a season. I 
Hold on. I hope my wife's still watching. How's the Bengals defense against the run? Answer that for me, and then I might be able to have a better answer. But right now I'm leaning towards Michael Carter because I think he'll still get snaps with a uh, Robinson still learning the offense in New York. So I think Michael Carter pretty much is their premier back, and I'd play him just off of he's going to get the ball more. And also New England isn't that great at run defense. So, yeah. That was a wild question. <laughs> you like if my wife is still watching, who's better than like, that was your wife's question? I think she's downstairs watching still. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, you know, like what's bad is that we have these guys in the same conversation. Like we're comparing Michael Carter, who's a two, with Najee Harris, who's supposed to wreck the league. So, I mean, you know, with that, I'm going off potential because we know what Michael Carter is. And if you expect to win the game off of Michael Carter's performance, you've already lost. You should have powerhouses in other areas. So, with to me, I will go with Najee Harris because, once again, you know, he was expected to have a good year. So, it has to come on at some point. And I would put, you know, my bet on him versus someone who – we got traded away because he did not, you know, have all check off all the boxes. I can, give, I can go with that. Sleepers, Isaiah Pacheco. Pacheco, sorry, that's the guy I would tell you to play. <laughs> yeah. Latavius Murray, Kenyon Drake, and Elijah Mitchell. Yeah, I'm gonna take the top. First three, um, Kenya Drake, because he's, you know, he's the number one right right there. I think what you say, Gus Edwards might be playing, but, you know, yeah. um, you know, uh, if he plays, then I'll take Kenya Drake off of there. But to me, number one is uh, that Isaiah P. guy from um, Kansas City. Definitely. Yeah, I just, um, as we've been sitting here, I just went in here and uh, made sure I just put Drake in my starting lineup. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, I'm, I'm out of that. Out of that list, just Kenyon Drake because Kansas City hates running backs. Uh, Latavius Murray, I don't trust nothing about Denver. And I, I leg, Elijah Mitchell isn't even the starting back. So, yeah, I'm going Kenyon Drake only. Shout out to Connor, man. Appreciate you tapped in. So uh, what his question is? Best QB duo there is in fantasy league, in your fantasy leagues. Shit, Tua. Would... Tua Tunga Vailoa, the T guy with the long name. <laughs> nice he's, he's the best qb and um period and i mean you know we got up and down maybe on um hurts but yeah i like tua and heineke i'm telling you i'm sold bought and sold on heineke heineke gonna keep buying them jordans <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you chris we see you need some help who should i start lamar jackson or justin fields we talked about this earlier, and we were all um, in agreement that we would roll with Justin Fields. Easy. Uh, Russell Wilson to surpass the projections for the for this week, but are buy or sell? Sell. I'm a buy. I guess I'm the tiebreaker, huh? What's his projections? His it projections? can't be that high. <laughs> I mean, he's been. <laughs> Out the whole year, so that's that's the only reason why I'm buying. I mean, it's not like we he's the car from the uh Park Avenue Mercedes dealership anymore. According to CBS, they're projecting to have 19.8 projected points, exactly. And I think he fumbles you know. the ball too much. I, I don't, I ain't on it. Nope, I sell him. Uh oh, so what you but got? Here's, but here's one caveat though we're playing the Raiders. Thank you. That, yes, that's I understand why. That. <laughs> a good old boy, Dominique, don't like it. I get it. But look, this is the thing. No, I just – Russell Wilson's past it. He's done. He he got no. the bag. He's been right off into the sunset. Exactly. He's about to have another kid. Just be happy and enjoy retirement oh, already. Yeah, everyone's talking about worrying about him, uh, Russell uh, Wilson. He's, got, he's Gucci. He got Sierra. You know what I'm saying? Everyone, yeah. you know, he goes, he's on, he plays like crap on field, and everyone talks about him, but he goes home and gets treated like life. <laughs> Bad. We got you, Chris. Good stuff, man. Uh, Jamie said his brother got hurt bad yesterday against Ohio State. Who's whose brother? Oh shoot! Wow. Oh, I think he's. She might be talking. I don't know if she's talking about to his brother or not. But that's the only person I can oh, think of. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Mm. Speed of recovery, young man. Speed of recovery. Yeah. Um, we got running backs to six. Kind of feel sad for this guy, but he's been beat up all year. Uh, DeAndre Swift, James Robinson, Kareem Hunt, and Damian Harris. I agree with all of them. I agree. Perfect. Uh, bust alert. <laughs> Najee <Ooh>, Harris. <laughs> Ooh, day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it, it's he started out promising, but I don't, don't see him being there too much longer. Hey, wow. you, wait, I'm, you're talking about um, Mike Tomlin, right? Well, no, I think Tom. I think they don't give at least. I think they're gonna give him at least one more year. After beating the Saints, I think you know he at least got two more games then. But he's still on the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wide receivers to start. We got Corlin Sutton, interesting. Tyler Boyd, Garrett Wilson, Jacoby Myers, and Lazard was already on there. He didn't give me my projected points, but he gave me some productivity Thursday night. Appreciate that trade, huh? Hey, no problem. Back in the hill. I agree with everything but Sutton. Yeah, that's a yeah. – he's tied to Russ. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not even a, I'm not even a Sutton hater. It's just – if, like you said, if you got any kind of connection to Russ, no. He said that <laughs> with conviction. Right. <laughs> right. That's 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 chest. <laughs> oh man. Um, and then we got sleepers, Kadarius Tony, who I ran real quick to go pick him up off waivers. <laughs> Paris Campbell, Darius Slayton, Nico Collins. I thought Slayton was injured. They have him. Let's see. They have him down to, to be playing and projected 12.6 points. Uh, I'd oh, say wait. yes. Go ahead. No, let's, let's get this. Let's get him in there. We got Will tapped in in the building. We hey, see you. what's up, Will? He says Tony's going to kill. Yeah. Yes. I'm going Tony and Campbell off this list. Darius Slayton, if he's coming off an injury. And I don't know nothing about Nico Collins. So, yeah, I hope he balls. That's the reason why you should play that young fella. That was my actual wide receiver, um, you know, sleeper. Nico Collins. Play this young fella, man. They're playing Washington, who ranks number seven against the uh, pass. And, you know, last week he had 10 targets. So clearly the guy's able to get separation and get open. So definitely I would start Nico. I'll start. say roll with Nico. Nico. Yeah. So who Tony plays for? Chiefs. Ah. Oh, <laughs> it changes things, huh? <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I still, you know, think Tony, like y'all said, I, I agree, Tony. But, you know, definitely, you know, when you see a sleeper, you know, you see my definition, um, check out Nico. I agree. With, uh, then we have wide receivers to sit. Adam Thielen, Deontay Johnson, Allen Robinson, and Brandon Cooks. I swear, everyone we talked about earlier, you told me to sit are on the sit list today. I've noticed that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sit Thielen because he started off hot and now he's cooled down finally. Deontay Johnson doesn't really have anything going for him from a throwing wise. Allen Robinson shocked me. And Brandon Cooks, like Coach Lee said earlier, he don't want to be there. So, no. Start Nico Collins. Bench yeah. Brandon Cooks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because he's going to be he, covered. He's organization. Yeah, and in addition to that, you know, he's going to have good coverage, you know, so that's going to leave opening for Nico Collins. Unk said, book it. Book it. Bust alert, DJ Moore. I dropped him long a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> 
And that was the only game. The, the, the week I dropped him, the game, I think they switched quarterbacks and he went off. That was the one where they had P.J. Walker and he caught that long bomb. And that was the only time I felt like, man, why did I drop him? And ever since, I was like, oh, good. Even before I that. I remember why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Tight ends to start. Dalton Short, Schultz, Cole Kemet, Tyler Higby. Yeah. See, got it. All of them. Coach, I think you should start that one because of Dalton. I am me personally. I'm out on Dalton. I like the young rookies they got over there. Cause for me, Dalton, he gonna get you the catches in a PPR league. But as far as like from scoring, it seems like the youngsters are you know, especially when they go to the three tight end set, which kind of seems to be their base offense now. When they go into that set, those young guys are, are getting those opportunities in the red zone. And Dalton, I've never really been a fan of Dalton. Cause every time he catches the ball, he looking like he's trying to find somewhere to fall down. He ain't trying to get no yaks. <laughs> He's just trying to catch it and took. Pretty sure he got injured for that last year, too, in the playoffs, his knee or something. He was trying yeah. to fall in a place to fall down, and that's when he jacked his knee up. <laughs> and those young boys are hungry, man. They you know they're trying to catch the rock and go upfield with it. Yep. It's like that SpongeBob episode when the smallest pebble fell on the ground. That's what he says he tripped over. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Higby and Kimmett. Y'all agree? That I'm sorry. Y'all agree with them? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm going Cole Commit for sure. And Tyler Higby, he might be the only viable option to throw to in LA. So yeah, start all these guys. Why not? I uh even after your little recommendation about Schultz, you're right. I mean, if you're PPR, you gotta play him. He'll get 10 catches somehow, some way. Yeah, that gonna look for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys went after the ball. You know, <laughs> that part. <laughs> uh, sleepers Greg D- Dolcich, Tyler Conklin, and Hayden Hurst. They've picked every dude with a weird hairstyle to put in the sleeper <laughs> list. <laughs> Have faith in Hayden Hurst. That's my guy from this list. <laughs> that's, he's like, that's it. Look, I with you on that. I agree. Um, and then tight ends to sit. They had Tony he already played. Uh, Taysom Hill and Dawson Knox. You don't sit big play, Tay. And you also think that Dawson Knox is probably on this list because this was probably made a little earlier in the week, I would guess. And they were thinking they were playing in six feet of snow. That's true. That's true. Valid point. And Taysom Hill to Unc's point, I'm not just saying it because I know Unc's my boy, but um, he can do too many things. He can throw. He can take handoffs. He can catch. <laughs> yeah, That's a lot of points he can accumulate. Yeah. And that's one, once again, that's one thing, you know, and he can, you know, if your position have the flex where you can wide receiver, um, wide receiver, running back, tight end. You put him in there. I mean, because he can play, like you say, he's too many, um, too many opportunities for him to score lots of points. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, man, let's get uh, Bree Campano. Um, hey, Bree. Uh oh. <laughs> oh man, definitely oh. sorry to see that. Wow. Oh, hold up. Hopefully, speedy recovery. She's um, fantastic. Skull, just for you. Prayers to you. Yes. The hospital with myself. I saw you on and had to say hi. Yes. yes. Please keep us updated. We're gonna have to. Uh, I asked him for one of our for the show when we do. I was like, I want. I, we got to see that gritty, uh, gritty dance, so I can get that over to gritty. Might have to. If y'all are a fan of gritty, let us let us know. <laughs> and but, then uh, a bust alert for tight ends. To finish up the set, start him, set him set on session. Foster Moreau. That's just picking on Dominique now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, we're going to take our last break. We'll come back and hit you across your head with our game picks. Y'all hold tight. Appreciate y'all hanging out with your boys. See you in about. Beer Chain 20. 
Hey, what's going on, man? It's cornerback Delvin Bro here from your favorite team, New Orleans Saints. I just want to go ahead on and give a shout out to STWF Media for allowing me to come on and talk about my testimony, my story, and also talk fantasy football. I just want to say thank you, man, for the honor. I appreciate you, man. Y'all make sure y'all tune in tonight at 7.30 Central Time. Bro Show out. Just like that. <laughs> Thank you, Bree. We appreciate you. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Uh, Marco says, uh, half PPR, Pittman, Olave, or Tony? I don't, know, every, I don't Every time I hear Olave, I'll be like, ole, 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 ole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I want to do that for some reason. Every time I read that. But, um, I mean. I, I think I got to eliminate Tony because it's on the one football. He had a lot of options out there, <laughs> <laughs> um, especially in, in, in a PPR league. Uh, Pittman, they may he may get some work today because they may get behind early. <laughs> <laughs> they are playing Philly, and they're going to try to do the run, but I think they're going to be forced to pass. And Olave, he's you know he's the only option there. So. Hmm. I might go. I might go by default with a lobby. That's just me. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> got two for a lobby. Jake, now you stay for me, what do you think? Yeah, I got to go with a lobby because that's pretty much number one at, in New Orleans. There's no way you can't go with that guy. Yeah, he was the reason why I dropped uh, Leron Landry. Because you know, I watched him not get the ball last week with a couple passes don't do to him, he dropped them. So yeah. Ole, 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 ole. Just know that that's what I'm doing every time he catches the ball. Will says uh Tony's the second option today. Hardeman hurt Juju's house. That's a um that's a good that's a good um point. It's Kelsey. Tony's third option, Kelsey playing. Thank you. <laughs> Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, you that's know, um, yeah, that's a good point. Definitely keep that, you know, in mind with setting that up. So you find a way to slide both of them in there. It might be better. I got, I got, I got both of them starting in a couple of my leagues. Facts. Facts. So picks of the week. First game off the bat Chicago at Atlanta. Chicago. I don't like the Shut Falcons. Down. Who did Josh say? I'm Jake say? Chicago. Chicago. Chicago as well for me. Uh, Cleveland at Buffalo in Detroit. <laughs> 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 I got Buffalo, of course. Rough buff? I'm rocking with rough buff. All right. Wait, yeah. hold on. Wait. Deshaun Watson starts. No. He didn't start today? Uh, no, his first he, game he's he back in two weeks. When they play Houston. Oh, okay, okay, but he's back practicing. Okay, so yes, yeah. rough buff with confidence. Um, Philly at Indy. Come on now, Philly. Philly as well. Easy. <laughs> Jake gonna probably say Indy, huh? Nah, that's a fair. <laughs> <laughs> New Jersey at New England. Hey, y'all know who I'm rocking with J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets. You know we normally do that in the south. <laughs> what, what, what do you think? What, what, is this even a question? <laughs> <laughs> I got it's a rivalry I, week, baby. Everyone loves <laughs> rivalry week. Man, I'm stuck, man, and I still got to pick this before the the game start. But I'm leaning towards the Jets just due to how they're just beating up teams right now. But this is in Gillette, and their last loss is to us. They can't beat us. They ain't beat us in, like, six years. Damn, you know what? You sound like a Cowboys fan when they played the uh, Giants. Like, yeah. They can't, oh, you might be, they you might be talking me into this, man. <laughs> I say you got in mind, but we start doing that. Like, oh, 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 oh. All right, here. Last, last point. Bill Belichick makes young quarterbacks look like fools out on the field. That's my last thing. 
Mm. I just changed my pick to the Patriots. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, the Rams against the Saints. I got New Orleans. Oh, wait, wait, what are they, what are they playing at? In New, New Orleans. Orleans. Oh, yeah, I'm going with the Saints. This is my – well, I guess it's not since y'all are taking them. I was about to say this is my sleeper pick of the week. I'm going with Saints, but never mind since we all in. <laughs> since we're all in the <laughs> yeah, Detroit kind of like at the Giants. Giants. I got the G-Man. Yeah, Giants. They're playing together. Carolina um, at Baltimore. Be more. Yeah, I agree. I I really wanted this to be another sleeper pick, but nah. Baker gets owned <laughs> by the Ravens. So nah. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't like picking them. I guess some dirty birds from Baltimore. <laughs> I didn't see this. Will said the Rams and Saints the disappointment ball. Yeah, that I see that. Based on, expectations. <laughs> <laughs> based on expectations coming in, that is very true. Back. Um Washington at Houston. Washington. Gonna pop a cold Heineken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, babe. <laughs> uh, the Raiders at Denver. That's easy. The Raiders can't beat um, the goddamn Puck Ball League team, so let's Denver. ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh uh, I'm going to go with the lost vet. No, nah, I'm kidding. I'm going with the Broncos. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> Raider, Dallas, Raiders couldn't find their way out of a wet paper bag. I'm good. No, they couldn't. Uh, Dallas at Minnesota. Damn. The money, is, and the money is on Minnesota. So you can keep playing. Wait, so wait. I didn't come through a lot I of I charged it up for you. So it, the game must be in Minnesota. It is. Yes, uh, the game's in Minnesota. Oh, man. All you're going to hear is skull. They're going to be beating that big-ass drum. In the nice <laughs> <thing you. laughs> and all y'all go <laughs> see, the, you know, the biggest thing is just seeing, like, when the Vikings play the Saints, I hated seeing. Jordan Jefferson doing the gritty up and down the field on my Saints. I think y'all going to, you know, share in that same sentiment. You're going to see that big-ass drum get beat, and they're going to do the gritty all day long on y'all. Sorry. Let's go. He said, Bree said, consensus here in the ER, and no one is going to pick Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> Will says, yeah, think, oh, yeah. Two, I think, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm at to go against it. Now it's in my in my pick'em league. You know, if Captain Dallas wins, then my heart is is full. But if they lose, I pick the Vikings, so I get those points. So <laughs> I gotta this, go with, this, with Minnesota today. This is a pretty easy decision for me. Skull. <laughs> Skull. Yeah, this is easy. They're gonna be beating that drum just like Don says. This no, is that big ass drum. Right. <laughs> that big ass drum. This is my Super Bowl favorite pick from the beginning of the season and preseason. So yes, absolutely. We're we're going Vikings on this one. Cincinnati at Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all already know what I'm going with that. Who day? <laughs> Ch hey, change that who dad on. Come on. You know you want to. Yeah, I was gonna wear my uh you know my Jamal J. Chase jersey today, but I couldn't find a black one, so uh, I think someone stole it. So with that, I'm just I'm going who they who they stole my damn jersey got <laughs> Hey, and since two's not here to make fun of me, I'm allowed to do it this time without getting made fun of. Who they? Who they who they think gonna beat them bangles? Nobody, definitely not them bitch ass Steelers. Excuse me. <laughs> Nice. The first time I've ever heard that. Like, it it kind of reminds me of the Saints song, man. I like. I feel like I was just robbed. Like, God damn. Kansas City at the Chargers. Oh, this could be game of the week. Yeah, game of the week vibes all day. Same thing with that Buffalo Viking game last week. This could be a game, especially with these receivers back. 
but I can't go against Patty Mahomes ever. So this is a Kansas City game, but very well could see the Chargers win it too. So, but I'm going Kansas City. Man, you know, I got the Chiefs. I'm going the upset. I'm wow. going, okay. Yeah, because you know one thing, like um, everyone's coming healthy. You know, everyone's coming back healthy. Uh, Mike Williams coming back to play. Keenan Allen's playing. You know, I think um, they're going to rally the troops together. I think they're going to come out with a win. I'm going with the uh, Chargers. Right for so. And the last game, San Fran at Arizona. <laughs> I never go against my boy Jimmy Hanson, and I'm definitely never going to go against Kittle. He, he's my favorite I love the Patriots, but my I have favorite players to lead. My favorite current player is George Kittle and has been for like two years ever since Edelman retired. So, yes, 49ers, baby. Let's go. You said that with the chess. Like, even if I was on the rails about who to pick, he was like, you know, this is my favorite player since Edelman. I'm like, well, shit. I'm going with you. <laughs> you know what I'm make two of that. You know what I'm saying? Heck, yeah. Like, bang, bang. Make bang, bang, bang. Swings. <laughs> <laughs> I got San Francisco as well. Heck, yeah. <laughs> And that's our game picks of the week. Obviously, these are for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> <laughs> Who y'all got for shout outs today, man? We're about nine minutes away from kickoff. Nine minutes? Yeah. All right. Well, hey, I'd like to thank everybody that came on from my end. Everybody came on from your end. Thank you for the likes, the subscribes, the shares, all that. Always share us out because it gets us more exposed. We love it. We love you. Thank you. Thanksgiving coming up this week. Be safe. I only got two days of work this week. I'm excited. Uh, if anyone's a Power Rangers fan, sad news in the world. Jason David Frank has passed away. Shout out to his family and I uh, hope quick uh, quick rec recovery from uh, the loss. So uh, it's morphing time, baby. Time for uh, football. Man, all right. I was a Power Rangers fan. Like, I wasn't like that. I just know the red, the blue, the green ranger. You know him by name. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Jake, man. Not from State Well, Fall. he used to be he used to be an MMA fighter. That's the only reason I knew that. Mm. Ah, there it is. <laughs> There's a connection. There's always a connection. <laughs> he was like, hold on, wait, stop it. There's a reason why I know this guy. <laughs> But now, nah, definitely a shout out to everybody. Like you said, that supported the brand. We support y'all. Definitely a shout out to Bree, man. You know, our hearts, everything goes out. You know, y'all out there with your kid. You know, I'm a kid of three, four hundred, you know, um, at former teacher. So you know how that goes. But, you know, and it's always hurtful when your kids are not well. Um, so definitely a shout out to you, your family. Our, our hearts are with you. Uh, shout out to everybody that's in the group. Shout out to everybody that's coming up to the studio. We appreciate y'all. We got a lot of events coming up. Uh, we got the Ugly Sweater Christmas Party. We got some live entertainment. We got some, a comedian, some more poets. We even have, uh, you know, maybe some music. So y'all definitely keep uh, tapped in with us So as we provide more information on that. But, um, yeah, you know, just check our website, stwfstudios.com to keep up with us. But shout out to everybody again that tapped in on our stream. We appreciate y'all. And before I cough again, that's all I got. <laughs> hey, shout out to everybody um, who hung out with us today. Um, everything Unc said, you know, got a lot of things going on. Try to bring that heat to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Shout out to everybody who hung out with us today, man. You know, it's continue, you know, this thing continues to grow. Thank you for allowing us to be your viewership of choice this morning. We appreciate that. Uh, put a lot of pressure on it, but you just say pressure make pipes first. That's what we do. Um, shout out to the fam, grandkids down there. They're already cutting up part of tearing shit up, but we finna go down there, party, and have a good time. Uh, y'all enjoy y'all turkey, man. Uh, don't 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 sleep on my cowboys. We're gonna beat them G men on Thursday, but today, man, you know, it might break my heart, but it is what it is. But anyhow, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us. Make sure you tune in with it tomorrow night at seven thirty for the play call sheet. So y'all can come back and let us know how we did today. <laughs> and remember, it's not our fault. Good. It's not our fault. Entertainment purposes only. <laughs> we appreciate y'all, man. Y'all have a good day. Enjoy your team. Hope your team win unless it's against somebody else's team. Y'all have a good one. I appreciate you.